The European Commission today presented its white paper on the future of the European transport industry, especially the decarbonization of the industry by 2050. What should people in Europe know about this white paper? I think this white paper is first of all about making transport industry in Europe even more competitive, but making it more competitive also means making it more resource efficient. What are the main objectives when it comes to being more resource efficient and reducing the carbon emissions from the transport industry? I think we have to be realistic. We have to change the transport sector until the year 2050, which means that we have to show a pathway where we move away from oil until 2050, where we have a 60% reduction in terms of CO2 emission in the year 2050. But this will be a long struggle. It will mean making the internal market more efficient, it will mean building new infrastructure, it will mean developing innovation in the sector, and these are the main messages in the white paper. Critics are saying this is not ambitious enough. This basically leaves the tough decisions up to the next European Commission. And to be honest, 2050 is a very long time ahead. It's 40 years. A lot can happen in that period in terms of technology. What do you say, what are your arguments against those critics who say you are not ambitious enough? We have a list of 40 initiatives in the white paper. These 40 initiatives will be implemented in the next 10 years. The white paper has been done together with our climate colleagues and also our energy colleagues and we're working at an approach which is cost efficient for the European Union so we're putting this very straight into a jobs and growth agenda as well and we think that we can be ambitious but at the same time also realistic in terms of achieving our transport targets. What does the paper say in about the future for traditional carbon fuels? Well we have to move away from carbon fuels. That is very clear. We set targets, for instance, in the area of maritime or aviation. We say also that we need cities which are no longer um, visited by conventionally fueled cars. So we need to change a lot. We need to bundle traffic as well, but we need to do this without curbing mobility. That seems to be a headline phrase from this white paper. Commissioner Kala said there will be no curbing of mobility. What will that mean? Will that mean that citizens can continue to commute to their workplace as they are now? Let me give you an example. Some 20 years ago, 70 or 80 percent of traffic between Paris and Brussels was by car. Now it is below 40 percent because there's another attractive offer and nobody in his right mind would be as stupid to use a car to drive from Brussels in to the center of Paris. This is the type of approach we want for all of Europe.